Hello everyone, welcome to VLSA Academy. This is 11th lecture and today we will understand about standard cell delay modeling in the library. So any cell we have seen till now will be performing certain kind of functionality in the design that is referred to as a standard cell. If it does not function, perform any kind of functionality that is actually a physical cell. It does not have any role in the design with respect to functionality. So when implemented in design, such all standard cells will have a corresponding delay model associated with it. And that delay models are stored in the libraries and these libraries gets invoked whenever we load the design. So when we load the design, designer will be specifying the path of all the libraries associated with the design. And hence all the timing information of all cells automatically gets invoked. So we do not have to worry about from where it is coming but we should know that there is a library from where the timing information of all the cells is coming and we have to understand this we will understand that in this video now let's see how the standard cell calculation is done standard cell delay calculation so standard cell delay calculation actually depends on three different factors so there are three different factors one is input transition so that is input transition of a particular cell that means how the transition that is how the cell pulse is rising or falling that transition affects the cell delay calculation so second thing that cell delay is dependent on is your output capacitance output capacitance of your cell so this is your cell c1 output capacitance of this cell will be dependent will be actually affecting the cell delay calculation so output capacitance is actually nothing but your wire capacitance in vlsi it is called as net capacitance plus your all input capacitance that are attached to that net so input capacitance in fact i should say that it is input pin capacitance input pin capacitance plus net capacitance or wire capacitance that gives you output capacitance of that particular cell third most important thing you can say nowadays is your operating condition operating condition means what is the condition under which your device under test is operating so operating conditions also affect your delay of cell operating conditions can be of three different types mainly one is your p p for process and then second is your v v for voltage that is your power and third is t t for temperature so these three conditions actually affect the delay of cell now let's see how do these things affect so input transition let's move on to see how these three things affect first is your input transition so input transition if your input is rising slow then your cell delay will increase so how much transition is there in the input that affects your cell delay if it is very slow to rise then your cell delay will increase if it is fast to rise then your cell delay will decrease so input transition affects in that manner you can say that input transition is actually directly proportional to cell delay if it is high then cell delay will be high if input transition is low then cell delay will also be decreasing and output capacitance is also the same directly proportional same method you can say so if output load is high then your capacitance will be high and because of that your del cell delay will be high you can take example here let's say this is your pin and it is driving many different loads and then cell delay of this cell will be high let's say if fan out is high then obviously capacitance of each net will be high will be accumulating you can say let's say this is a fan out so all these fan out will cumulatively give more capacitance at the output of this cell where i have drawn the arrow so your cell delay will be high for this cell let's say this name of the cell is a then a cell delay will be 
high for because of this output load so output load also should be in control to get the proper delay if output delay is very less then cell delay also will be very less then comes the three third part that is operating condition so p v and t we say p for process so p for process means there are different kinds of manufacturing processes so because of that process nature it could be let's say slow it could be fast and now there are ultra fast or they call it as turbo so because of these also cell delay gets affected in slow generally process is slow means cell delay will be more and in turbo generally cell delay will not be very high it would be nominal or maybe less then comes second part that is v for voltage so voltage also affects your cell delay generally if your voltage is less let's say there are two operating ranges one is vd and one is vs that is power to ground and you are operating in norm lower than normal voltage so this means you are actually stressing your device if you are operating in this range then this range is actually affecting your device and you are stressing the device so your cell delay will increase because it is operating lesser than the normal applied voltage then cell delay will increase in fact let's clear the screen and now plot the graph to understand the behavior of delay with respect to pvt so let's say our first graph is your process versus delay so let's say that this is your x-axis where we are plotting the process and here is the y-axis where we are plotting the delay so actually if you say that you have uh, there are three variations of the process so let's say the graph is looking something like this actually so there are three variations of the process first behavior is your slow process second behavior is your typical process or nominal process and your other one is last one is fast process with respect to that your delay is also like this you have three different values your delay is highest when the process is slow so cell delay increases if your process is slow cell delay is normal if the process is typical and cell delay is less in case of fast process you can say worst delay is this and your nominal delay is this and your best delay is this best delay comes when your fast process is there best means it is actually least delay and worst delay means maximum delay you get when your process is slow then comes the second behavior that is let's say delay versus voltage so voltage versus delay if we try to plot so let's say we have here in the x-axis voltages and delay is again on the y-axis so the graph will look something like this it means that this value is let's say minimum voltage and this is your maximum voltage and here this is your worst delay and this is your best delay and this is your nominal delay so if your voltage is if your voltage is less your delay is very high but as you keep on increasing the voltage your delay decreases exponentially you can say that it is exponential the relationship with respect to voltage change of voltage with respect to uh, delay is exponential now let's say third third plot is your delay versus temperature delay versus temperature so we have three operating conditions one is p then second is v and third is t pvt all together makes it a corner so let's try to plot the graph for this also so the relationship of this is something like this the graph will be something like this if we say that temperature is here and delay is here in this axis then your temperature when it is low then let's say this is minimum so your cell delay is your very less you can say best cell delay and your worst cell delay comes when you have when you have a high temperature maximum temperature you can say hot of the device device is hot here the device is under cold 
so it is asked very frequently in the interviews that why the delay is minimum in the case of cold and it is hot then the delay is high why it is that so the answer is electron movement is also dependent on your temperature so when your temperature is high the resistance offered by the electrons is high because of random motion of kinetic energy because of that your this cell offers higher resistance and delay increases of the cell and in case of cold it does not it is you can say linear so current is linearly moving and now it is as the process of technology node is shrinking because of that there is a one phenomena which is coming into the picture and that is called as temperature inversion temperature inversion means we expect that delay will be less in the case of minimum temperature but actually it is not happening and because of this inversion now delay is also high in the case of minimum minimum temperature your device is cold then also your cell delay increases so this phenomena is called as temperature inversion that phenomena is also asked in the interview so altogether the combination of p v and t makes one operating condition which in world of sta is called as a scenario so for one scenario where p v t are constant we can say that standard cell delay is a function of input transition and output load hence mathematically we can say that your cell delay d so let's say it is capital d cell delay will be your function of capacitance that is output load capacitance and input transition time we can write it like this and in the library your standard cell library it has characterized it will be characterized in terms of a lookup table like this so here in this you can see that one one row or one index is of capacitance or output load and one index refers to your input transition time so the values here are function of this load and input transition time which means let's say if your output load is of 0.4 units here unit is femtofarad so in the beginning of library it will be mentioned as femtofarad is the unit of capacitance load and transition time ns is also mentioned in the beginning of library then values are mentioned as a lookup table in the library for every different standard cells it will be like that so when your load is 0.4 femtofarad and you have an input input transition of 0.1 ns so output load of femto 4 femtofarad and 0.1 ns of transition time you have a delay of 10 it will also be mentioned that your value of delay is either ns or ps so let's say it is ns so 10 nanoseconds is the delay which means let's say if it is of and gate then at any pin it will be defined for a particular pin so if your input transition in the orders of 0.1 ns and output load here at this side is in the order of 0.4 farad then it will take 10 nanoseconds to transfer the data from input to output this is what is meant by delay calculation similarly slew is also mentioned in the library so similar model is used for slew calculation also slew means we already explained that in previous video some there is a video on that also like how the slew is calculated is dependent on your rise and fall waveform how fast it is rising or how fast it is falling these slew values are also calculated and a model is mentioned for that also in the library like rise and fall so after the delay after this calculation has been coming up there will be a table delay value that is let's say this 10 and there is a scaling factor for voltage temperature and process so we already told you that there is a pvt corner and for every constant corner there is one value of cell delay for every different input and output load so 
here there is a scaling factor in every library for every different corner i assumed while explaining that k is 1 it could be anything that value will be multiplied with the delay value and then only final delay value is calculated that's all for this video in next video we will understand that how this table is maintained in the library how to read it and till then keep stay tuned please like share and subscribe to the channel thank you